Well, there's different types of social um, events, aren't there? There's a social, social, which is purely social. Mm. You've got family, friends, and people you just want to chill out with. And then you've got business social. Okay. So that, that's the question then. Well, the family, the, here's, the... <laughs> here's the question. <laughs> I'm going to coin that. I'm going to, I'm going to coin that for myself. Un, unapologetically, I'm going to use that phrase. Now, here's the question. Okay. That's going to, that's going to be a more common thing for me now. Yeah. So the question is, given how we've evolved as a, as a people, technology has evolved at a tremendous pace, right? You know, when you watch the old movies mm -hmm. and they've made a movie regarding the future, and they're yeah. trying to depict the future in there. You always see like really high tech stuff. And sometimes you think, you know, did that actually come true? You know, like when you watch Back to the Future yeah. or when you watch. Um, At the time it was far fetched, but now. No, but was it? Then. Yeah. Because we couldn't so. conceive what that future would look like, right? Imagine pulling something out of your pocket and talking to each other. Yeah. Then, when I was a kid, that was like, whoa, that would be so cool. Yeah. That wasn't far-fetched to me, though. It wasn't. No. I'd say it was. Even, even so much as touchscreen. Yeah, touchscreens, yes. But just to pull a, a piece of equipment out of your pocket to communicate with somebody else, to me, wasn't a, a far-fetched concept, um, given... You had a walkie-talkie as a kid, didn't you? Yeah, I did. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You see? But if we move that forwards and we look at other movies like... Um, there was a Sylvester Stallone movie I watched a long time ago. I mean, some, some of the viewers might not be old enough to remember. But it, well, to me, it didn't feel that... It doesn't feel that long time ago. That much time has passed. But it actually has passed. He gets frozen. And there's a guy called Wesley Snipes gets frozen. He's a villain in there. They're, they're like in some kind of... Um, Wait a minute. Yeah. So that's just learning. Wesley Snaps worked in a movie together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty cool movie. And they basically come out into the future in um, so many years afterwards. If someone remembers, just remind, remind us what it is. So, and okay. he's, Wesley Snipes is a bad guy. He's the villain. And Sylvester Stallone is, is, is a cop. And obviously they're fighting then in the past and they've actually been brought into the future to fight each other again. Um, because Wesley Snipe escapes or something, and then, then brings Sylvester Stallone to come and catch him. He's the only one who was able to catch him. Okay. And Sylvester Stallone is in this futuristic world where people don't touch each other, right? They can't. They don't even sit. They say hello by just waving, hovering their hands, okay, if you look in the camera like that, and that's their their greeting. Now, if you look at what's going on right now with the coronavirus wow. stuff, right, and. Even then, they were talking about, you know, how they meet, met with each other, even went to dating. So the, I think it was Sandra Bullock, who was the um, actress who was playing uh, the other role. She asked um, Sylvester Stallone for a date, which for him was like, wow, is this what happens in the future? You, you know, it's so easy. Okay. And it's all a virtual thing. They use virtual reality goggles and stuff. And you think, whoa, you know, how... It's a VR headset. VR headsets. Now we're in 2020, we've got this thing going on with the coronavirus. We've somehow been forced to live a futuristic lifestyle to an extent, going digital in so many different ways. Mm. Now, we, where we used to attend meetings in, in person, where we used to attend networking events in person, you know, we used to go out for dinner with business associates. I used to do that a lot, you know. And right now, to attend a meeting, it's all done via use, the use of technology. The, 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 the rates of number of people who have now started to use things like Microsoft Teams or Zoom has shot through the roof. Mm. You know, loads and loads of more people are starting to use that. And the question we have is, is this a mechanism which can replace the, the, the normal face-to-face -face interaction. Now, to discuss this, I'm going to bring in a friend of mine. This guy is, is an award-winning networker. So this guy is one of the directors at Pathway to Grow. We've worked together in many, many different platforms together. And he was a guy who was everywhere all the time. There was rarely a night where I wouldn't see a picture on his Facebook to, to, to show us you know, of that he's kind of, of some event. kind of some kind of an event. So whether it's a black tie event wow, okay. or whether it's a networking event 
He runs his own networking events. We welcome Abid Khan. How are you, Abid? Good evening. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks. Thank very good. You for all, me. It's been a while. <laughs> so <it's> been, <laughs> well, well more, than, more than two people on the screen at the same time. I don't know, man. You, I've, I've, got, I've got my sanitizer. <laughs> so, just in case. Just see, that's from a distance, yeah. So before we start, tell us how's Ramadan been? Ramadan's been good. Um, I expected it to be uh, a lot harder, actually, but Alhamdulillah, it's been good. It's been good. Mm. Um, okay. It's nearly over now, so yeah, it's been good. Yeah, so hasn't it gone fast? It has, it has. It's just, uh, it's honestly, I, at the start of it, I was thinking lockdown and then Ramadan and how we're going to break the day up and what we're going to do and it's going to be long. But you know what? It's just it's just flown past. Mm. Excellent. So, Abid, now you're the kind of guy who was, you know, um, you've always got a bee in your bonnet in the politest, politest possible way, right? I have never seen you sit still. When you're having conversations, even on the phone with me, you are... Um, multitasking you've so things, yeah you've got so many things going on in your mind in person and i've said i've said to avid once he's the kind of guy he will be talking to you about something mm. he'll have two of the conversations and they go say hang on hold on a second i've got another call coming please we'll talk to them guys come back in your call and pick up from exactly where he left, where he left off. off wow <laughs> that's a talent that, that is a talent i want to know avid for somebody who's so active in the in the social circles how are you coping during this time um, it's been challenging to say the least. Uh, I think the first two, three weeks of, uh, of lockdown, um, there was a slight um, decline in mental health, being locked up. Oh, wow. um, and then, and then, and then you kind of pick yourself up and think, well, these are the cards that we've been dealt with. This is what we've got to deal with, um, and pick yourself up and get on with it. But it has been very, very challenging. Um, isolation, not being able to engage with people not being able to talk talk to people and talking to people on the phone or on the video is, is something completely different to 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 personally meeting people mm. um so it, it has been challenging but i think uh, we're getting used to it now um yeah. and now it's actually um you get anxious when you actually meet somebody <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have to retrain ourselves now to meet people again how are you uh, meeting people or how regularly are you meeting people now even virtually in the virtual world virtually two three meetings a day um two three uh, i've had three today wow um okay. so two three meetings a day work various things um um and and it's on several platforms you've got skype you've got zoom you've got you've got you've got you've got uh, whatsapp um um, um videos mm. uh, so about two three a day do you see the digital platform? Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Unapolog unapologetically, I'm going to say here's the thing. Here's the thing. We have been kind of forced to use the digital world, a di the digital platform, more since the lockdown than we've ever had done before. If you think about the way the future has been evolving, not the future, been, but the, the way industry and, and workplaces have been evolving in the way they work and employees work, there was all this talk about how it's a good idea to get people to work from home um, or get people to take their work home a little bit more regularly, you know, office staff and the people who have got more clerical type of work or work that they can do on laptops, computers and phones. And now some of them have been kind of pushed to do doing that. Do you think that's been a good experience for them? Well, I mean, as you say, there was a, a push towards people working from home and working remotely. And those that were accustomed to it, I don't feel that they've had much problem adopting. But mm -hmm. people like myself who are, who are used to going out, meeting people, um, doing site visits, um, um, going to networking events, having that personal interaction, that personal engagement, it mm -hmm. has been a bit hard. Um, after we spoke about this uh, last week, I actually put a poll up on Facebook asking, you know how people are finding working on zoom and i put a poll up on instagram as well okay and it was a it was a 50 50 split, it right, was a 50 /50 okay. split. um then i done some research on it and the bbc actually done a, a, a done some research on this um and exactly what i was saying to you on the phone that day mm. is 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 mind numbing mm. because you're having to concentrate so hard on the video whereas when yeah. you've got personal when you've got personal interaction there's a lot of body language, 
Um, and if you go back to the days when we done NLP, it seems like yeah. so long ago. You yeah. know, we learned the whole rapport thing there and the whole body language thing. Sure. Um, on video, you don't have that privilege. Um, yeah. Then you've got the fact that sometimes a video, like like before we went live, you know, we were doing sound checks, we were doing this, we were doing that. So mm. when the video freezes or when there's a silence, you don't know whether that's a silence in your conversation or that or, or that's due to technical issues. Okay, yeah. And then the fact that I'm looking at a camera now, looking at my face, thinking, oh, my God, I look, I look a table mess. <laughs> you look haggard. <laughs> so so there's all these things happening in your head, mm. um, which kind of takes you off the purpose of the actual call. Do you, do you find yourself, I mean, whenever I'm having a, a, a conversation, like a meeting, virtual meeting, I had a governor's meeting with the school yesterday. And although I didn't put a, sh a suit jacket or anything on, I still put perfume on, like, because they're going to be able to, to smell me. You know what I mean? I was like, I put, I put and, some on. Yeah, but, but this is the whole thing. When you're going out on a meeting, right, or you're going out to an event, you know, you get home, you get ready, you put your suit on, yeah. you put your shave on, you have that mindset that I'm going yeah. somewhere to do something. Yeah. And then you go to that meeting or that event and you meet people and you engage with people. Um, and, 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 and there's that mindset that I've actually come here to actually do something. Now, mm. when you're within your house, on the same screen you're having your work meetings, on the same screens you're seeing your siblings and your family, mm. on the same screen you're seeing your friends, yeah, there's no difference. Sure. Mm. Um, so it's, 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 it's like going to the gym. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like going to the gym. Some people can train at home, but how effective is that? as opposed to when you leave your house with your protein bottle in your hand and your gym kit on and you go and sign into your gym and you have a proper workout um, mm -hmm. and you know you have a shower and you come back home, like you know that you've been for a workout. Um, yeah. I'm finding that, I mean, many people may find it different, but I'm, I'm finding that the majority of people that, that, that actually commented on my post were finding the same. So we have mm -hmm. been forced into this lifestyle. Um, I don't think it will, I don't, Although the, the way is set for it to be the future, but I don't think it's going to be as effective as one-to-one -one meetings were. Do you, do, um, you think it'll, do you think it'll replace it, though? I, I, I don't. I don't. I'm like, I've, I've, I've done a few site visits for my insurance business on, online, um, yeah. and I've made the, the business owner walk around the premises so that I can look at certain things. Mm. It's nowhere near me, me actually visiting the site myself. Sure. Because I, I can't have an idea of the of the geography of the building. I, I don't know exactly what's what. What you know? Um, yeah. um, you know and, what you're looking out for. That even it could be yes. sort of sensory things like a certain smell, which might yes. trigger certain yeah. risk for you. You know. So yeah, I get I get that. Yeah, and even lighting. You know. Um, yes. So 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 it, it it does have it does have its challenges. And it's funny that we spoke about this that day. But I've done some research afterwards and. It came up that you know I was right, and I weren't the only one feeling like that. Yes, there is a lot of pluses to it, um, mm -hmm. and based on you know our current, our current situation, it's been a godsend. But will it be a thing of the future? I don't know. How would you How would you feel? I mean, if let's just say it's not just on the screen, but you know, like when you got some of these Marvel movies and um, yes. some of these futuristic movies where they got people. Hologram. There, hologram. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's funny. I had. How I, would you feel about that? Yeah, <laughs> someone mentioned this to me. They said the future is holograms. But do you honestly think we could have a chat near chat of it with the um, holograms? <laughs> no chance, man. Is it you know, um, and, and, and 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 there's been so many online networking events that I've been seeing. Um, I just don't feel you get the same value. Mm -hmm. Body language speaks volumes. Body language speaks absolute volumes. It's like you said towards the beginning of the conversation when we were doing our NLP, and I'm sure we've done this before we even studied our NLP together. We 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 do analyze people's body language. We read mm. people through the way they behave, um, and even simple, you know, subtle signs give give away a lot. Um, yeah, it's like somebody could be, you know, somebody could be very negative verbally, and they could have a negative mindset, you know before they start the meeting, but your body language and the way you interact with them face to face can sometimes change that, change their attitude yeah. and make it more, more favorable to yourself. Whereas when yeah. you're talking to somebody on a screen, you're very limited to 
your sales tech, you know, your sales techniques, being a sales coach, you know, your sales yeah. techniques are very limited because there's only so much you can persuade me. There's only so much you can say to me, and there's only so much you can win me over on camera. Mm. 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 Yeah, the physical interaction is 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 has a it has a level of its own. So, for somebody like you who's not, um, let's just say, synced with this digital world yet. Do you think? Do you think that could be a generational thing? Do you think we're just too old for this? I think a lot of opportunities will be missed if we adopt to this way of life. Do you think a lot of opportunities would be missed, would be missed if we don't? No, because we because we don't want to. Well, we don't. We hope that our next generation doesn't go towards the robotic um, way of life. Um, Person interaction, one to one. In, in, nothing beats one to one interaction. I agree. Um, you know, otherwise, you know, we could have been doing deals on the phones. And yes, we do do deals on the phone, but those deals are a lot sweeter when we do them face to face. Do you think? Do you think that maybe we will now um, decide, like, okay, now these are the types of deals we want to be doing over the over the video conferencing and phones, and these are the types of deals we would prefer to do face to face? If 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 we're forced to, I think we will. But as I said, I think we'll be missing out on a lot of opportunities. Let me ask you a question. Uh, sorry to cut you short there. You you've been having more regular meetings with uh, the Riverdale team, right? You, you, yeah. The, the company teams uh, from around the country. Yeah. Do you not think that's been more? Um, it's better to do them virtually like this, as opposed to in person because of all the distance. Yeah, really for the really workforce, it's, it's 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 been brilliant. But on the on the on on the opposite to that, if I was selling you a policy or if I needed to come and talk to you about your insurance mm. i'll be very limited to what i could say to you and how i could engage with you and what i could sell to you um from a from, from my internal team perspective yes it's been brilliant you know in fact we've spoke more now than we spoke before because we have regular meetings now um okay. and we're in the group. so are we saying then doing having virtual communication is far easier for internal communication or better for, or could be better for internal communication, like your own team members, your own colleagues. But when it con concerns external people, it's better to do it face to face. Not necessarily. I, th I think for us as an organisation, it's been it's been good in that respect because prior to this, we were talking on the phone here and there. Uh, we planned meetings, but we'd never. I mean, you know, it it, it very seldom happened. So this has kind of taught us that you know we can communicate with each other weekly, or mm -hmm. every two days if we need to. Um, and you know, it's 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 a way of, of keeping the loop and engaging. But even then, you know, a meeting lasts forty five minutes. Your wow. part in that meeting is about five minutes. It's like somebody said to me that day. It's like Zoom meetings are like cricket. Once you've batted, you're not interested in in in, in, <laughs> in anything else afterwards. And yeah. that's so I was I was I was doing a seminar that day in Dubai. Um, and I, 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 I had about 35 people on the, on the Zoom. I set them the task. Yeah. I put my camera, uh, my mic on mute. Mm -hmm. I turned my camera off. Mm -hmm. I done two quotations. I sold the policies. And I went back into that, into that meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, what's that the right thing to do? Debatable, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> Because your mind has just gone away from that task, yeah. And you've gone and and, and done two other different things, mm. and then you've tried to reconnect with that audience again. And yeah, I was laughing about it at the time, but I thought afterwards, I thought mm. you know that wasn't maybe the best practice. And I admit that I done that because I was bored. <laughs> well, you do get bored quite quickly. With yeah, but if that was a face to face. If I was leading that class. There's no way that that would have happened, and that personal interaction and that—I mean, you've led seminars, you've led masterclasses. You know that mm. that personal interaction and the way you deliver your talk or you deliver your your class, you mm. can't get that message across online. Mm. Sure, I there's agree. a lot more emphasis when you're doing it personally. The yeah. way that you walk, the way that you—you you know the, the the way that you carry yourself on stage when you're when you're mm. teaching, when you're educating people. It can't be. It can't be fully achieved online. Sure, sure. Mm, I'd agree with that. I'd agree. I've been directing. There's some things that we can take forward. 
Slim. Yeah, I, as I say, I mean, it's it's, it's made us um, as a, as an organization. It's it's helped us streamline, and 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 you know, we've now learned that we can speak every two three days, and and you know, but I think it should be limited because an hour calls are like too long, and you you know you start going off into different directions. Um, so there is some positives, and yeah, definitely some people who were previously accustomed to working remotely, for them, it's the norm. Mm -hmm. But I think the majority of people who are who are used to going out and meeting people and doing face to face interaction and looking into the whites of people's eyes and you know handshaking the deal and shaking on the deal, um, mm -hmm. they will struggle. We're not doing the deal. Yeah, and they <laughs> they they I think will struggle. And as I say, at the moment we are we are forced into this, and there's no other way around it. But um, do you think this is the future for other industries? For example, can you see call centers going back to the way they were, or is it just as acceptable to now ask people to work from home? I mean, call centers, call centers use telephones anyway. They, I mean, for them, um, I think they'll still use their normal telesales techniques. I don't think they need. I, I think it's industry specific. Some industries may be able to have face to face meetings and. But again, when you, I mean, this wouldn't be the deal breaker. If you were out to do a deal, mm. online isn't possibly the best way. Well, I guess it all depends on the nature of your business, isn't it? Right. So yeah. if those people who are already trading online, it's no different to them. Yeah. Those people who, are, who have retail businesses, some have failed for not going digital. No, going, no, going, 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 go, going digital and 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 going online, or or, or having face to face interaction. I think it's slightly different. When you're when you're when, when you're yeah, digital, you're marketing your product online. But when you're engaging with your client and you're trying to get a message across, or you're trying to sell a product or a service, yeah, nothing would beat that personal perfect. interaction. So um, much so, so much so, both you and I have traveled across the world on aeroplanes to meet people. To exactly, exactly. Because of how exactly. important that meeting is. Exactly. It's like, you know, it's, 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 it's like I'm saying, I, I, was doing that, I, I was doing that seminar that day and I, I, I really felt awkward. I, it, just, it, just, it just, had I been there in person, mm. it would have been so many times better. Mm. Definitely. Definitely. But yeah, it's, 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 it's one of them things, it's better, it's better than nothing. Um, and we're stuck with it. Um, well, that was going to be the next question. Had we not had the technology to do this, we were buggered. Okay. Yeah, we were buggered. So, 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 so it's been a, it's been a, it's been a lifeline uh, in many aspects. It's been, it's been, you know, it's, it's kept us going. Mm -hmm. um, it's kept many businesses afloat, um, and 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 it's been brilliant. But just as a temporary measure, mm. um, I, I don't think I could see myself carrying on this way um and networking events as you know or i mean I, i'm I, i'm judging um the first um business awards online in in june okay the uk business awards they're yeah. now they're going to be judged online now last year at that at that particular event the businesses had to come and pitch to five judges so yeah the panel of five judges and the business had to, had to come and do a seven minute pitch wow. now when they're pitching their business online yeah i mean it's not televised like dragon's den where they've got all the angles and everything and, and they can really make you feel part of that experience mm. when they're doing it on zoom or or, or, or online will we, will we be able to do them justice or will they be able to do their businesses justice when they're pitching to us probably not interesting to see actually i'm I, i'm actually looking forward to it but we'll be they judging be creative. i guess this is where you get uh, the, those people who are creative naturally, they get ahead a little bit. Yes, because if they're creative with what they have with the tools they have, it shows a different side to them and it adds another string to their bow. That's not, that, that, yeah, but I think that's another point. I think you know as well as I do. A lot of people are camera shy, a lot of yeah, people are yeah. camera conscious. Um, yeah. we 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 have no hair to uh, hair to comb, so we're okay. But a lot of people are very conscious about their hair and about their look. For yourself, I've got plenty of hair to come here. Where's your beard, by the way? Where's it's your there. beard? It's there. It's there. We actually have a beard for you. If you it's were in the studio, one second, let me see if I can. It comes and goes. It comes and goes. So are people have a beard. Look, I've actually got a beard here. Oh, brilliant! Send right. the post. 
I, I'll, I'll send one out to you, yeah. So you so, can say you've been on with the beardos, yeah? So a lot of people are, are conscious about their appearance. So when they're sitting in a meeting with their colleagues and their boss, and they're a bit conscious about the way they're looking on screen, will they be able right. to deliver effectively? Mm, good question. That's a good question. I think uh, it depends on how many people are at the other end of the screen. Mm. Who you're talking to. So if you're talking or addressing a large audience, then naturally there's going to be some form of the same type of nerves that you would have if you're talking in front of an audience in real life. It might this be is it. less slightly though, because when you've got an audience in front of you live in real life, then you can hear the whispers, you can hear them. It almost feels like when you're first, when you're new in, in, in public speaking, it almost feels like you can hear them breathe. <laughs> you know, it's you know you feel that self-conscious, but when you're online, you can always mute everybody else. You can just mute them. Yeah, but uh, the thing is, you you know you've got you've got a meeting at work. You wake up in the morning, you get ready, and you fly out the door, and, and you go and do your meeting. Um, you're conscious about the way you look. Yeah, but because you can't see yourself, yeah, it doesn't really play on your mind unless someone starts staring at you, and then you get uncomfortable. When you're on a screen, you're looking at your own face mm. and you start noticing things that you didn't notice before. You start noticing zits that, that, that weren't there before. Now, that obviously has a, a, a impact on your, on your, uh, on your performance okay. in that meeting, yeah. right? On your confidence and, and your value in that meeting. And, 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 and mm. you know, it's, 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 it could be detrimental because it could totally throw you off track. Mm. Yes, you're right. Mm. I mean, what do you think stays with us and what do you think goes forward once once restrictions are completely lifted and we're past it? Um, where do you see things back to where they were before? I think I no, I I think well, I certainly won't be. Um I, I no, I think in terms of online meetings, yes, there will be some meetings which we've learned now that you know what, I don't need to travel all the way to London for a five minute um um a coffee with somebody. I can yeah. I can do that. I don't I don't have to spend three hours on the train there and three hours back and go through all the, you know, um, all the traveling, I can just do that online. Mm -hmm. If it's really purposeful, then okay, I'll make that journey. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, it has educated us to an extent that, you know, there is this way of life, this and this is this can be effective to a limit, um, maybe as an icebreaker, you know, as a, a as an intro, but it may need to be followed up with a personal with a personal meeting. In terms of going out and meeting people, um, I predicted my next Chutney and Chat event would be around about this time next year. Um, depending wow. on what the government does, um, I certainly won't be going out um, in a rush. Because the thing is, it's, it's an assassin that we can't see. It's, you know, no one knows who's carrying what. No one knows um, um, where anybody else has been and if they've contracted it on that day. Um, and we've all got responsibilities and we've all, all got our own uh, health and welfare and our family's health and welfare to, you know, to mm -hmm. consider. Um, so God knows, you know, what's going to happen, but I don't see anything, anything, anything happening too, um, um, uh, too, too soon. So the next chutney is going to be probably around this time next year. I, you, you, know, you know, you know, at the start, at the start of the lockdown, I, I was one of the first ones to cancel my chutney event. My chutney event was that week and I canceled it a week before. And I took a lot of stick for it online, but you know I what? Remember. Yeah, I, I, but the thing is, I, I I just come back from Dubai and and I knew what was happening there, mm -hmm. um, and the severity and 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 how serious it was, and I'm I'm so thankful that I cancelled it, mm. because you know it could have been catastrophic. Um, and we know now that people that were due to attend that event were infected. Wow! Really. Um, so, you know, it, it could have been absolutely, it could have been catastrophic. So, you know, it's, 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 um, it's like Russian roulette. You can't, you can't chance it with this unless you're a hundred percent, you know, sure. Um, and, and, and I've seen too many people, um, pass away and I've seen too many people be affected by it and, and be, you know, seriously ill by it. That it's a chance that I'm not willing to take. For my own health and for the you know the the health of, of the of the delegates, depending on how soon they get this track and trace app going, depending on how soon they get the immunization, you know it's all dependent on that. But I don't see any public events anytime soon. Okay, 
So you reckon the, the, the main public events like networking events are, aren't going to be happening for another, you know? I, I, year? I'll struggle to... Uh, I think a good marker will be when the football starts again, when the stadiums fill up again. Okay. Um, and there's confidence in that. Yeah. But I don't see that happening any, anytime soon. And this is similar to what someone was saying about the schools reopening. Um, I heard one parent saying that, look, when the MPs can go back and sit in the House of Commons... Which is, which is fair comment. Then, Why? I'll send, I'll just call, then I'll consider it safe. My daughter's school for me yesterday just to check up on the kids and check up on the homeworks and everything. And um, and they confirmed they're opening on the on the 1st of June for teacher training and they're opening up on the 2nd of June for the children. Um, mm -hmm. um, um, and she said, she said, look, it's entirely up to yourself. If you want to yeah. send your children, you can. If you don't want to send your children, it will not be frowned upon. Um, I, I won't be sending them. I had the same call. In fact, as you know, I'm a governor at the school. I've got an interview with the uh, with ITV either tomorrow or the day after on this particular subject of sending kids back to school on the 1st of June. Yeah. I have a year one student in my house and I have a year six. This is a two year grouping student so they're gonna go back, yeah. that they're going to go back. I've also opted not to send mine back. Look, here's the thing. I, I think when you, because you know my background, I'm a risk management consultant. I'm weighing up the risks. I'm doing, I'm calculating risks and looking at the risk appetites, you know, of any action that I take or for the kids take or the family takes. For me personally, um, had it not been a case that I have an elderly mother who has underlying health conditions, I may have taken the decision to let the kids go back to school purely because they are going to be staggered. They're going to try social distancing. They are low risk group. So I would have been okay with that. My reason and justification for not sending the kids back was because yeah, yeah, and this is uh, and this is very similar to myself. You know, you've got elderly parents in the house. Um, we know children are carriers. Um, it's not something that I'm prepared to to gamble with, mm. and I, and it is a risk because they still don't know, um, and mm. no fault of their own. You know, it's a, it's a totally new virus. It's something that we couldn't have been prepared for. Um, they're still trialing and experimenting, and 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 you know, but. We cannot be the guinea pigs of that, um, sure. and 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 you know I I I'm, I maintain my stance. I'm my kids, maybe September, you know, um, yeah. but yeah. certainly, it yeah, it but certainly, certainly not in in in, in June. Cool. cool. We initially thought we were going to have you for about ten or fifteen minutes. You've got your own podcast to. I've got uh, my own to go at seven o'clock. My phone is ringing, so yes, yeah, so I'm lovely to leave you. Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you for having me. Um, pleasure. Um, enjoy your podcast. For anybody who doesn't know Abid, you can follow Abid Khan on his uh, on his uh, social media platforms, uh, I mean, handles, and uh, listen into his podcasts as well, which are very enlightening and, and interesting. So uh, have a good evening, Abid. And, Brilliant, gents. Uh, thank you very much. You, you take care. And don't forget, stay lit. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> stay at home. <laughs> take care. Yeah. Oh. That was Abid Khan, uh, director at Pathway to Grow, also as part of uh, Riverdale Insurance, um, an award-winning um, networker. This guy is always everywhere. He mm. was everywhere. So, so he's someone, felt the yeah. It's for him know, to be impact. contained. You know, it's it was uh, it, it's got to be something. You yeah. know what I mean? It's got to it's got to be something. But I wonder what what other people have been experiencing. Those people who are possibly watching this and people who have. Um, who have mm. something different now than what one has been before. general consensus now is things are not going back to how they were before anytime soon. Mm. I think even once restrictions are lift, softened mm. and eventually lifted, mm. it just won't be the same again. So many industries will never be the same again. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, we fast forwarded into the future. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I agree with that bit. I think a lot of it won't hold. Mm. I think uh, that whole face to face factor, um, we need that. You know, mm. we need that. So that will return. Um, there's so many other things we will we'll learn from. For example, traveling to London for a, a short meeting yeah. now doesn't really need to happen, does it? Yeah, exactly. And the fact is, it's brought everybody up to speed. Mm. 
you know, um, Zoom and these other platforms had millions of users before. Mm. I think Google Classroom had 50 million users prior to this, wow. which had built up over the years. Wow. Within a matter of weeks, 50 million has gone to 100 million within weeks. Yes. And, you know, yeah, doubled within weeks. Doubled. Yes. So it's brought everyone else up to speed. So now that meeting that you would travel hours for just to have a yeah. coffee, because that other person's not great with technology, they've, mm. they've, they've never had a business meeting over, mm. you know, a video camera. Now it's brought everybody up to speed. And a lot more of this is, should we say, less frowned upon. It's more possible, isn't it? It's more acceptable. Yeah. It's normal. Normal. Yeah, I agree, because in the past, when you would have arranged a meeting with somebody, or even a prospect or a client who is like a couple of hundred miles away, you mm -hmm. wouldn't even entertain it. Or you'd be reluctant. I would be reluctant to entertain a client who's a couple of hundred miles away, but the project is very small. Mm. Or what they want you for, or what they want me for is going to be limited, right? So for me, it's like, I'm going to travel a couple of hundred miles away, you know, and, you know, those people some of them hadn't been very tech savvy. So now when you've got this technology, you can put a face to name, have a conversation. It's not the same. It's not going to replace face to face. Yeah. But it's almost like a preliminary assessment of whether you want to take this further or not. It's yes. like added another slot in between your telephone conversation and face to face meeting in between. You've got a yeah. video conversation. Exactly that. Exactly yeah? that. Yeah. So it's like added another layer in between, mm -hmm. which helps you determine whether you're going to stay at this rate. You're going to stay like this. Uh, or you're going to, you know, take it to the next stage mm. or whether you're going to retract and, and move back. Another thing that was mentioned, though, is a lot of skills will be lost. What do you mean? Human interaction skills. Okay. You know, face-to-face -face communications. I'm not sure. It could go either way. If you've got people who would either meet face-to-face -face or just chat on emails and messages mm. who are now open to having a face-to-face -face interact uh, you know conversation mm -hmm. that could also ha happen as well you can actually have people more open to having face-to-face -face interactions without meeting personally physically but doing it virtually rather than just texting or writing emails there'll be some of that i think there'll be some of that but then again and i think i would mention it who needs to meet people on a daily Mm. Yeah, every single day, mm. if not every other day. And he's almost kind of a bit anxious when he has to meet people now. Yeah, it's only been a few weeks. Mm. Can you imagine another year of not really meeting anybody outside your immediate circle to then having to have face to face meetings or to mm. then have to do presentations or go back to? You see what I mean? Now, with someone like that who's had years and years of experience in the field, mm. I'm sure they'll adapt in no time, you know, back within his comfort zone and all of this. But somebody who was in very early stages of business, very early stages of life, let alone business, mm. um, where will it leave them? They've not really had years of face-to-face -face interactions mm. voluntarily. Okay. They've now had a year of living in the digital age. Right. And they're now being asked to go back. Yeah. You see what I mean? Where does that kind of leave them? This, is this going to cause more people to want to stay indoors, stay at home, order the pizza online, talk to people via email or, you know, video calling? And that is the future. I think it'll be a bit of both. I think there'll be some people who are craving to go out there. It's inevitable, isn't it, that it's going to be a digital age? I think it would be naive to think that we're not going to go more and more towards the digital uh, platforms or assistant look mm. this is digital this is technology we're just talking we're talking technology in general aren't we right mm. this is technology um 20 years ago you could not have imagined that kind of technology belonging to what 70 80 percent of the, the world's population to kids even yeah yeah it's technology though so had this pandemic taken place 25 years ago or 20 years ago, mm. what would have been the then. reaction then? Or how would people have coped then? Well, there's been pandemics, isn't it? It's not, it's not, obviously, it's the first of our time, but it's not the first. But 
the way that this well, had we has fast tracked okay, things yeah. now for te technology. Okay, let's talk. Let's not. I mean, look, we're not restricting this to just technology like this, like laptops, computers. What about money? What about him, <laughs> man? You know, <laughs> where I, is it? I read. Yeah, where is it? Where is the money? <laughs> where well, the show money? me the money. Look, I read a book around twenty years ago, and um, and that was talking about it. It spoke about the different effects of, uh, you know, evolving as a nation of humankind. Mm. into the use of technology and the risks that are involved with it as well. At one time, it used to be, you know, uh, trading between your sheep and your goats and your cows and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then when obviously commodities were found like gold, it used to be the use of gold and trading that. Then people started having so much of it, they couldn't carry it everywhere. So they decided to establish a kind of a bank where they would get Currency. certificates in return for their gold. So this, they, they own this much gold is a certificate i give you that certificate and i buy things like a house or whatever i want from you you take that certificate you own that much gold eventually that turned into cash paper money right? right paper money and then paper money we had checkbook checkbooks to credit cards and debit cards now we're not even using them much i'm using this or this to make transactions in shops mm. it's amazing so if we look at the world evolving in terms of the way the, the money is used. Some have questioned whether there is somebody above with the powers to be who can plug, unplug something, and then you can have zero in your accounts, all of you. You know what I mean? In theory, they've questioned the fact that, okay, yes, Bank of England, there's so many safeguarding measures and everything. But it just got me thinking and thinking like, if everything is so digitally evolved, mm. we don't even have tangible things to prove how much we own mm -hmm. or how much money we have or, or you know what our net uh worth is worth is then if somebody decided or something happened and the plug was pulled mm -hmm. um you know what then which is a possibility i guess of course it always is isn't it with uh... ibran ibran is saying even court hearings are now moving towards online solutions um face to face will slowly erode wow okay when you ibran when you say court hearings are we even looking at witness statements um and if in case of criminals who have to give their statements does it have an effect in any way on the jury uh, does it in your experience does the jury mm. uh, perceive that witness statement to be more credible when it's in person or less credible? What, what's the, what's back the to the creativity thing, you know, um, if you can picture yourself in good lighting with a good setup, camera setup, et cetera, et cetera, you can almost filter yourself to look innocent. Is that, is that, is that well, how like, it would work? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do you see put, what I mean? Put makeup and, and yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> You know, you could do some turn the resolution of the camera but, quite low so that people can't see the blemishes that Abid was talking about the zits and yeah. So some make yourself look. So the, yeah. Funny you speak about money. I went to the bank just oh, a few days ago. Yeah. And I was speaking to the cashier because obviously they they put tape and they control how many people go in. The chairs, everything mm. is gone, mm. and there's only one counter open, whereas mm. it used to be four counters. The other counters they've just frosted over. So I thought. Mm. So they're obviously closed for foreseeable. Okay. And I asked the cashier, I said, have you guys been briefed as to when you can might expect some kind of normality? Mm. You might have a second cashier open or, you know. Yeah. And she said, this is it now. Wow. I said, really? What she for the year. She goes, no, this is it. She goes, there is no plan to open the other counters or the other cashiers. She goes, you'd be surprised how much people can do online or over the phone. And now that they have to do it, before they could, yeah. they just didn't. Yeah. Now that now they've, they've had to do it, forced to do it, we are in a position where we say to people, you know, you have to now do it online. Well, Don't come into the branch. Russ always throws in some very interesting. You know, Russ's questions could be like a topic of their own. Does virtual currency empower or impoverish the economically poor countries? 
that's that's a that's topic a on it so that's a podcast on its own well there's, well there's very little benefit there if anybody can be i don't know if manipulated is the word but if anybody stands to lose out or be at a disadvantage mm. you'd imagine it to be those countries wouldn't why you? By, by by going digital, why? How do they go digital? How do you go digital? I mean, in countries like this... Well, let's just say, I mean, the first migration would be from actual cash to plastic. Mm -hmm. But for countries that they still have very much tangible assets, yeah, cattle I get it, yeah. or gold or whatever yeah. else, you know, you cannot... Your goats cannot I, become digital. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you're into Minecraft or whatever, yeah. you know. but well, you know what I would, you know what the funny thing is, people crave that kind of a lifestyle. Not once they've moved forward from it, they say they do. I don't know about others, but I do. I, I'm not saying that I want to live in a lifestyle where I've got a herd sheep and, and whatnot. But what I'm saying is that lifestyle of living simple in simple terms and mm. being closer to nature. Is seen as a holiday for the more kind yeah. of uh, you know. The, the but that's all it can be. We'd have it as a holiday, which is true, mm. um, but not as a choice of lifestyle. Not as a choice of lifestyle. Not for long term. Mm. I mean, you yourself, when you go on holidays, mm. do you ever go to kind of picturesque places or want to visit the kind of the the heritage, mm. you know, the yeah, old yeah. marketplace, yeah, yeah. the old buildings and these kind of things. You want to see it. You want to enjoy it. Mm. But then, of course, you want to go back to having internet, yeah. being able to order a pizza to your door and, sure. you know, all of these other things. Or a sweet retreat. I think that's a really good question. I, I, I think it just creates more of a gap or a divide between the developed or advanced countries um, and the poorer ones. And the follow-up question for that is, what happens to those who do not have the virtual? Exactly. And this is what we're saying, isn't it? Yeah. Does everything have to be global? Does it have to be, does it always have to be a global currency? Does the, I'm know? not sure, but because here's the thing, when you've got, when you've got um, trade taking place globally, yeah. a little man sitting in Derby or Burton on Trent can trade with the rest of the world who has who, who, who's never traded in his life before because of the digital world because of the virtual world he can buy or create his own stock and sell them on uh social platforms mm -hmm. uh even social media platforms like facebook market sell them on ebay sell them on amazon you know they can sell them on all sorts of different platforms somebody who's a nobody can become somebody more than somebody just somebody. this is reverse the roles because the nobody has become somebody because he's got a computer and internet. Mm. The somebody mm. that owns crops or fields of tea or anything, mm. you know, any kind of uh, mm. asset hasn't got internet, hasn't got access to. So the little man comes to this guy with, you know, mm. loads of fields or loads of product mm. and says, mate, you're here in a jungle. You have got no communication with the outside world. Mm. I can help you sell this mm. and help he does but that reminds me of this story about uh, the harvard student who went to the guy who was uh, who was uh, who was a fish who, who used to get the fish. fisherman yeah it reminds you of that yeah and, and, and this that's is what the reality, reality, isn't it yeah. for, for the benefit of people who haven't heard that story so this you you, you go on the no, no, do uh, <laughs> you know, no, since you've started but that Explain that briefly. Explain that okay, story. so briefly, the, the story goes like this There's a gentleman, he goes on holiday. Mm. Yeah, he goes to one of these picturesque uh, seaside. He's a Harvard student, very Harvard educated, student, yeah. yeah, big, big time man. He goes on holiday, he sees a fisherman, and he asks him, What do you do? Mm. He goes, Look, I, I go out in the morning, I catch a few fish in my boat, in my little boat, I sell it. And then I spend the evening with my family. I go for a stroll. Um, I enjoy time with my family, whatever, whatever. We mm, have dinner, we yeah. wine and dine, and that's it. I do the same thing next morning. Yeah. So he says, okay, well, what if I could finance you a bigger boat? He goes, okay, what would happen then? Mm. You'd catch more fish. Mm. Oh, okay, what then? You could make more money. Mm. Okay, what then? You do that for 20 years. He says, 
okay, and then what could I do after 20 years? Because after 20 years, you could have so many boats, you could have so many people working for you, you could be making X amount of turnover. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, okay, great, then what do I do? He goes, then you'd go for a stroll, you'd spend some time with your family, yeah. you'd wine and dine. He goes, it's basically what I do now, yeah. except I've had, had, it would have taken 20 years of my life yeah. to have a bank balance to show for it, which means yeah. I could live the life that I'm living right now. Exactly, exactly. Um, and no doubt the Harvard student and people like that, I get it, mm. but they're not really benefiting the man with the product, the man that does all the hard work. Look, ultimately, um, the digital world has its benefits, has its drawbacks. It has different effects on different people. With the elderly generation who won't get in along with it, people mm. who are past that kind of curious age of wanting to embrace new technologies, new behaviors, for them, it could be a struggle, it could be a challenge. We know because of the, the kind of people sometimes we help uh, in some you know, uh, other activities that we take on helping the elderly. Um, you also have drawbacks in terms of how this has an effect on the youth and the younger generation. Now, if you've got too much of it, then mm. if you've got children always playing on games, interacting, they're even talking. I mean, I have my kids playing on PlayStation sometimes and they're, they're talking in the headsets with their cousins who are down in London. Got, they don't get to see him very often, so at least they're interacting. There's a positive, the negative is they may, if it's not controlled, spend too much time on there, mm. right? Similarly, you have positives when it comes to business. You can reduce carbon waste, uh, sort of carbon footprint. You can you reduce uh, lots of extra um, costs mm. by going digital. Uh, you can save time, money, you know, as a consequence by going digital. And that's in that particular field in, in business. Mm. But at the same time, you can't replace the face-to-face -face interactions when it comes to meeting somebody who's, who you need to meet, whether mm. it's a prospect who you're looking to sell your services to, or whether it's somebody who's across the other type was a part of the world. Um, within families, social circles, Use it or don't use it, your choice. I know my brother, he, he doesn't even like using the landline, okay. the wired one. My yeah. elder brother, he doesn't even like using that. So forget about social media and doing video mm, conferencing. Video calling and stuff. Yes, yeah. this is not going to happen. So he's in our WhatsApp group, right? But he's, he never comments. I don't think he even opens it or even reads the messages. I think he's there in case he needs to disperse any important information to us. Mm. But is is I rarely even see him uh, having seen a message. As a general, though, do you think having gone digital mm. um, takes away any kind of human skills in general? Like, if you look at our day when we were kids, mm. we could run around in the street we could go to the shop forget about go to the shop to get milk we could probably do a, a weekly shop mm. so i mean we could have a list of 20 things yeah without having notes on our phone or you know yeah being able to call you, you could do so much you could mm. talk to people you could talk to the neighbors you could talk to the shopkeeper mm. um and all of these kind of things i think kids these days have got a lot of anxiety over having to have human interaction with somebody that they don't know or someone that they're not familiar with. Okay, yeah. I can only assume it's the digital age that's hindering them, slowing them down. You know? Mm. In our age, we spoke to people all the time mm. as kids. Mm. And you see this over the years, that kids of today only really speak to who they need to speak to. Mm. Do you think that's accurate or... I think it's leaning towards that way, yeah. I, I, I think it depends on the upbringing of a particular child. I don't think they're all the same. Mm. Uh, I think there are a lot of children who are very sociable. I have friends who are very sociable children who uh, are always communicating, interacting with me yeah. uh, and fellow friends of the family. Uh, my own children, I try to get them uh, you know, involved in social activities. But this is, this is again, that's, some, that's your efforts. Yeah that's you restricting their digital usage mm. and keeping them in check and teaching them all kinds of different skills and socializing. Mm. 
left to the digital age and the digital devices miss out a lot, don't they? Of course they do. You can have children who don't even see their grandparents because the parents are okay seeing them just, you know, engrossed in their technological worlds, mm. virtual worlds, but they forget that, hang on, you have grandparents. Mm. Well, hang on, you have aunties and uncles. See, the worry now is, <clears throat> is for all these years, we were able to say to these kids growing up, you're just texting all the time. You're WhatsApping all the time. Mm. You don't, you, how good will you be in a face-to-face -face interview? Mm. How will you do in an induction? How will you mm. be in a job? Mm. But this has turned the whole thing on its head yeah. because now they'll never have to do those things. Well, in some cases they won't. In, in, some, in some a lot of cases. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they will no longer have to do that face-to-face -face interview. It, would, it could, uh, could be like this over yeah. a screen. You're right. You're right. Um, and I think that will then determine who shines from a social perspective and who doesn't. Those people who have the confidence mm. to have a clear conversation, you know, the people who can speak so eloquently, they have such deep thinking mm. and really, you know, interesting ways of um, navigating through life. When they share that digitally on video, it's almost as if they're just acting and they're doing yeah. it really, really well. But in face to face conversations, you see them and they can't hold that conversation. They can't hold that conversation. Because it's narrated, it's scripted, and you know, it's something that's planned and executed properly. But if it's not, if it's done it's as soon as you say that, for some reason, my mind goes to like you say, eloquent speakers, yeah. you know. And there's been some in, in our times, you know, mm. some leaders, mm. um some people who have really pushed a cause. You know, mm. you think Malcolm X, Muhammad mm. Ali, all these kind of names and faces. Mm. And you look at today and you think, I, was, I heard Boris mm. describing what shampoo he uses. And <laughs> have you seen the clip? <laughs> if anyone's not seen it, you've got to look it up. And he couldn't recall the name. And he's just blabbering on about, yes, it's a bottle. It's a blue bottle. It's shaped like this. But I was like, what the hell? What? This is our <laughs> prime minister, you know? But sometimes I'll watch Donald Trump. Or, and these guys, and I think, this is the best of the best. For all our advancements, for all of technology yeah. and science and everything else, mm. they, these guys are what will be remembered for. These were the best. These were our leaders. Mm. And you compare, you know, Donald Trump to almost anybody of the past. Mm. It's just... Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Where's the advancement? Where's the progress? Mm. It's worrying, isn't it? Well, look, content is king. And when it comes to sharing content, if you've got something which looks great, it catches the eye, it catches your senses, it, it makes you think and question things. If it's short and snappy, when it comes to social media posts, you're going to get the interaction. If you've got um, uh, you know, a certain quality about you which people are attracted towards, whether it's your knowledge on a certain subject or whether it's your uh, advice and guidance that you can give, people are going to follow you. Um, social media is a completely different discussion in and of itself. Mm. When we're talking about general digital world and embracing it as part of our futures, yes, there are advantages and there are drawbacks. Yeah. I think. Um, I think it's important before drawing any conclusion for us to at least try it before deciding. Yeah. People sometimes make their minds up about things which they've never had any experience of. And they're, they're very, you know... Kind which of, in a sense, this is almost a blessing because this is thrust all this upon us, isn't mm, it? This is yeah, like, you must exactly, now exactly. do this. So right now, lockdown, social distancing rules apply. What do you do? You use uh, digital meet platforms mm. to help get around. Which have that. been around for years, but we've just had an option before, so we thought, yeah. no, thank you. But exactly. now, exactly, there's some things obviously which will will never replace. Uh, relationships will never be replaced just digitally. Uh, not proper relationships, well, anyway. He says, <laughs> <laughs> I'm all, I'm old fashioned. <laughs> I can say that already, eh? Um, and there's some things that will never be replaced. But all in all. It's been a great discussion. We've been on mm -hmm. this uh, for an hour. Um, 
next week, same time, Tuesdays at six o'clock. Make sure you log in and we'll catch up with you guys then. Over for now.